Um, fun fact, this is my second time filming this video. Yeah, the truth about technology is that it fails. So, round two, it's gonna be better, it's gonna be good. Truth about music, let's get started. I was the to tell the truth, the truth and the truth that the truth. The truth about music is that it's a powerful tool that needs to be used wisely. So we're gonna be talking about three main areas of how music can affect us. Music can affect our mood, our identity and music can affect our behavior. There are multiple, multiple studies done that show that music actually does affect how we feel. And music can be used to influence us in ways that are pretty drastic and probably more drastic than we think. We tend to listen to music that matches our emotion or to listen to music that will evoke emotions that we want to be in or moods that we want to be in. If you're about to play a football game, like you listen to hype music before you go out on the field, you're not going to listen to some before bed playlist and then go out and play a football game on the field. Like that just doesn't make sense. So if just instrumentals have this much power, just the music itself has this much power to influence our moods and our emotions and instrumentals aren't even defined, like I could listen to a song that's slower and say, oh, this is a sad song, where someone else might say, oh, this is just a peaceful song. We just have different opinions and different interpretations of the music. But then you have a whole other aspect of when you add lyrics, we have a way to clearly define the message and the mood that we want listeners to come into agreement with. So this is obviously a very powerful thing, but with great power comes great responsibility. So obviously lyrics can be used for great things like empowering you, inspiring you, motivating you, maybe at the gym, whatever it is to you. And then music is also an outlet for a lot of people like me. I write music as like my outlet to express my emotions. And a lot of people will go to music to process sadness, anger, negative thoughts, whatever it is. However, this is where as listeners, we need to be a bit more responsible as well. So yes, it's great to use music as a means to process emotion. However, there comes a dangerous point where we start using this music to affirm these emotions and to allow us to just continuously sit in those emotions rather than moving forward. And I, I understand this because I was there uh, at one point in my life, I, I had something happen and I was really upset. There was a song that I really related to, like it was like word for word what I was going through. And so I would just have this song on repeat in my car or it, before I went to bed or whatever. And what I realized is that I could actually be feeling happy and then I'd go to that song and suddenly I'm sad again and I'm reminded of the situation. And it, it wasn't helping me move forward because at that point, I had already almost come past it, but then every time I was going back to that song, it was like bringing me back into that situation and bringing me back into that sadness and depression. So what I had to do is just be like, okay, I'm not gonna listen to the song for a while. Although I can relate to it and I love the lyrics and I love the way the artist presented the situation that we both have gone through, I need to move past this. And so a common theme you're gonna see as we talk about music is that just because it's relatable doesn't mean it's truth to how we're supposed to be living. So just because someone else has gone through this or um, can relate to um, one of the examples is like, there's multiple songs out there that are like, kind of like, oh, I hate myself, I hate who I am. And just because I might be able to relate to that doesn't mean that that's how I'm supposed to be um, living and how I'm supposed to be feeling consistently about myself, you know? It's nice to know, hey, I'm not alone in this, but now how can I move forward? So just because it's relatable doesn't mean it's truth as to how we're supposed to be living and just because it's mass produced doesn't mean it's truth. So am I saying that artists that write sad songs or depressing songs or negative songs are the problem? No. And those songs are beneficial to helping us move through some hard times in our lives. However, it is our responsibility as listeners to discern when it's processing and when it's sitting in an emotion and when it's bringing us back. And if you're finding that you're consistently allowing your music to move you to a place of sadness, place of negativity, place of depression, place of whatever um, emotion that you don't want to be feeling, then that's your responsibility as a listener to change and um, maybe stop listening to that type of music for a while. Proverbs 18.21 talks about this power that words have um, and saying, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So yes, words can move us, words can um, bring life or they can bring death to us. Our, and so my question is like, is your music bringing life to your emotion or is it bringing death? 
Okay, numero dos. Music affects our identity. Music is a form of expression and we express who we are. So thus music will be in close relationship with our identity. For example, it's like when you first meet a person, a very common question to ask is like, what kind of music do you listen to? Why do we ask that question? Because as humans, we listen to music that we identify by or want to identify by. So by asking someone what type of music they listen to, it can say a lot about uh, what type of person that person is. So we either relate right away to a song or we see something within a song and the lyrics that we want to relate to and that is desirable to us. And this is why music can play such a huge role in not only affirming our identity but shaping our identity. As I was doing my research on just how we are shaping our identity psychologically, one article said that when we're in the process of figuring out who we are, we look to others and we mimic behavior that we deem as successful. So if I think that riding my horse down a country road or whatever is successful and sounds like an ideal life, then I'm gonna start shifting my behavior to align with the song because I want to identify with this song and with this message and with this lifestyle. So I guess the next question is what is success? What do we humans tend to think that success looks like? And Google defined it as the attainment of popularity or profit. Okay, so popularity. If I hear a popular song on the radio and I don't relate to it, but it's popular, meaning lots of people are listening to it, so oh, a lot of people must relate to it, but I don't relate to it, so suddenly I feel like weird. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not in on the game. I don't understand something. I need, I need to like align myself. I need to be able to relate to this. So I start shifting my actions so that I can um, be a part of this of this community of people that like are relating to this song because our ultimate desires as humans is to be in relationship God created us to be in relationship with him first and then with the people around us But we we will always naturally desire community and relationship and when we feel left out suddenly we're like Oh my gosh, like that's scary for us. But then there's a the thought of like is everybody just doing that with the popular music? Like, is everybody just assuming that everybody else can relate and so we're all trying to conform to this idea? So if the most popular songs, and the most profitable, mind you, are songs that revolve around the themes of sex, money, and drugs, don't you think that as we listen to those songs, we're gonna deem those things and those themes as successful and pleasing to us as humans and that is like the pleasing life? So are these things then things that are successful and leading us to um, a pleasing and healthy life? And I would say, no, that is not truth that they're singing it about. The way that the majority of these songs are discussing sex is a very vulgar and toxic kind. Um, money, money, as we talked about in one of the very first Truth Channel, is that money is an empty pursuit and it's a very toxic thing to have your identity based on. And so if you're listening so to songs that are sending you the message that, oh, being rich is successful, and then you're going to identify with that pursuit of, oh, money's going to make me happy. And that's going to ultimately be a very toxic place for you to be in because it's going to be fluctuating all the time, meaning your identity is going to be fluctuating all the time as well with that and then drugs i think we can all agree that drugs are as good as they make us feel they're toxic to our bodies and our overall health so those three things that are really the primary topics of the most popular songs we are listening to are three things that 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 are destructive and that are not leading us to successful pleasing lives and what's even more important about music and identity and behavior is that music is one of the main places that we receive repeated messages. Whether you have a playlist on your phone that you consistently go to and listen to the same songs over and over, or you listen to the radio, oh my goodness, I don't even know how many times the radio plays the same song. I swear they say like, new music coming up and they play like a 2012 song on repeat, right? And it doesn't even have to be listening to the same song, but maybe the same genre of music. Genres are gonna typically talk about pretty much the same thing in different ways. So repeated messages, whether or not they're true or false, eventually become truths in our minds and then our minds will act on what we believe is true. I'm not gonna act in a way that I don't believe is true, right, and pleasing. That just doesn't make sense. So when we're receiving these messages from music repeatedly and hearing them in our minds and coming into agreement with them and eventually deeming them as truth, we're gonna start aligning our actions to those things. And this is when the whole behavior part comes in. So Romans 12, one through two kind of addresses this. 
Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Our actions start with whatever we're thinking up here. This idea was used to sway a whole nation during World War II. Nazi Joseph Goebbels said, repeat a lie often enough and it becomes truth. And you can see that that's what happened is like, there was propaganda displaying a message that obviously was not truth, yet the people heard it so much that they began to believe it was truth and they aligned their actions with it. And there are multiple, multiple studies that also show that repeated messages influence our thoughts and behaviors. So then it brings us back to this point of like, just because it's popular and just because it's mass produced doesn't mean it's truth. So if music is a place that we're consistently hearing repeated messages, Shouldn't we care and ensure that the lyrics that are being sung in our songs that we listen to repeatedly are speaking on actions that we want to see in our lives? Um, now, you can use the argument all you want that like, oh, I just listen to the music for the vibe. I don't actually listen to the lyrics. And I'm just gonna say to that, like, you are still aware subconsciously of the overall message it's presenting to you. And as you listen to that repeatedly, that message is just gonna also continue to be affirmed and then acted upon. Maybe it'll be a slower process, but it's still happening. And I know that this is an excuse that is being used because I used to use it all the time. And then suddenly songs that I used to only listen to for the vibes or whatever, I found myself just like screaming along to every lyric at a party one day. And I was like, dude, how do I know this? Like, I thought I wasn't listening to the lyrics of this song. And that to me just showed like, no, I was actually like subconsciously taking in the words that were being said. And suddenly also, I don't think it's a coincidence, that my life was also reflecting what I was listening to. Are you willing to compromise and to risk that the messages in your music could begin to be what you're displaying in your life in order to listen to the vibe of that song or wh where, whatever you like about that song besides the lyrics. James 3, 3 through 6 kind of discusses this. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes a, that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire for it is set on fire by hell itself. So what this is talking about is like the power that our words have and the power that our tongue speaks and the words that we hear in, uh, in its songs and lyrics can shift our whole lives to start looking like those songs even if we didn't originally agree with what was being said because we're repeatedly listening to that and singing along i mean your own tongue is gonna be like singing along if you do like sing along consider what your lyrics are speaking to you and what messages you're coming into agreement with and reflect is that something you want to see displayed in your life or not and is it already being displayed in your life and if you see that your song your music is aligning with actions that you don't like Cut it out. Find something new. Maybe a lot of Christians you see don't listen to certain types of music. It's not a legalistic thing of like, oh, if I listen to music, like, I'm out. I'm going to hell. No, it's not at all. It's just a choice that we make in order to protect ourselves from even the possibility of going down those paths and um, coming into agreement with those songs. I hear a lot of people say like, you know, bashing on Christians and Christian views. You kind of make a joke and make a jab at that at a surface level, but if you understood the reasoning behind it, I, I really feel like a lot of people would want to do this. And that's what this video is, is I'm explaining the reasoning behind that belief, if you've heard that or seen that within people in the church specifically. And I would just encourage you to consider that if you're one of those people that has made the jab in the past, like it's fine, it's whatever. But I just want you to understand like where we're coming from when we do that. Let's align ourselves with songs that are singing about things that we wanna be seen displayed in our life. So yeah, music is powerful and it's an awesome tool. I love music, I love music, but with great power comes great responsibility. So let's start using it responsibly and being aware of the power that it has over our minds and ultimately over our actions. There will be more next week and then more than the week after that and then more the week after that. So just keep coming back because there will always be some new, tr new truth to find about practical subjects with biblical truth. So that's all. Have a good week.